Hello and welcome to the New Testament Daily with me, Jerry Dearman, where we read and talk through a chapter of the New Testament every single day. I'm glad you're here because reading God's Word daily will change your life. You can also help others find out about this resource and stay in the Word daily when you click like on this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, or share this link with others. So let's pray and then we'll jump into God's Word. Father, thank you so much for the precious, written, inspired, living Word of God. And I pray that by the Holy Spirit, each of us would hear exactly what you want to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, here we go. Mark chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. And again, he, Jesus, began to teach by the sea, and a great multitude was gathered to him. I love this, was gathered to him was gathered. You get the clear impression that the Holy Spirit was gathering people to the ministry of Jesus. And great multitudes, uh, a great multitude was gathered to him so that he got into a boat and sat on it or in it on the sea. Now, why would he do that? Well, a great multitude, as we mentioned before, would uh, be pushing toward him to touch him and end up pushing him right out into the water. So if he could get into a little boat and put out a little bit from the sea, then people would stay on the shore and not be pressing into him. But also, water is a natural amplifier. And so for him to speak, his voice would be carried a much further distance and people in the back would be able to hear much better. So it says he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea and the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Then he taught them many things by parables and said to them in his teaching. Verse 3, listen, behold, a sower went out to sow and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside where the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth and immediately it sprang up, but it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched and because it had no root, it withered away and some seed fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no crop. But other seeds fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased and produced some 30 fold, some 60 and some 100 fold. Now, we won't go into a lot of detail there because Jesus is going to explain the parable in a number of verses here. So verse 9 says, And he said to them, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Well, of course, everybody's got ears on the side of their head, but that's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is not saying, if can you hear me? He's saying anyone who has ears to hear. In other words, really, do you have a heart that's hearing what I'm saying and hearing what I'm teaching? Verse 10, But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve, so there's uh, sort of a medium-sized crowd here. There was a great multitude. Now there's those around him with the 12. So there's a smaller group. It said those around him with the 12 asked him about the parable, and he answered them, to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to those who are outside, all things come in parables. In other words, this smaller group that stayed around, they're leaning in. They want to learn more. He said, see, to you it's been given to know the mystery of the kingdom, but to those, the big crowd outside that's not hungry, really, for the good, solid teaching of the word, I'm teaching parables so that they can catch some things, but they're really not catching the mystery. So he goes on to say, uh, all those things come in parable to the big crowd, so that seeing they may see and not perceive, hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins of be forgiven them. So notice, if they would have a heart to hear the word of God and lean in and stay around like these folks did, then they could hear, their eyes would be open, they could see, they could understand, they could uh, learn, they could repent from their sin, and then they can receive the ministry, the healing, the forgiveness and such that God had for them. That's a lesson to all of us, isn't it? Okay, here's the explanation of the parable of the sower, verse 13. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? So Jesus is clearly telling them this parable is one of the foundational parables that helps you to understand the whole kingdom of God. And verse 14, the sower sows the word. So the seed he was talking about 
is actually the word of God. The sower sows the word of God. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. So Jesus is saying, look, I'm the sower. He's the sower. Jesus is sowing seed sometimes through me and us and sometimes directly from himself or the Bible. But nonetheless, he said, the sower sows the word, but Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that's sown in his heart. Why is that? Because when this word comes up, like he'll say a little later, as the mustard seed, it becomes greater than anything else in a person's life, greater than sickness, greater than bondage, greater than addiction, greater than anger greater than selfishness, et cetera, et cetera. And so Satan knows I've got to take away these seeds before they grow up and they cause this person to be spiritually strong and overcome the devil and all of his vices. So uh, the one by the wayside, when he heard the word, Satan came immediately and took it. Verse 16, these likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness and they have no root in themselves and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation, notice, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake. So you can clearly see if Satan can't just come and take the word out of your heart because you really weren't paying attention, then he'll bring tribulation against you or persecution against you to get the word out. It says, for the word's sake, it says immediately they stumble. Well, it wasn't that they didn't receive it. They received it, but they didn't realize Satan hit them with some hard times or some persecution to get them distracted. And then he took the word out of their hearts. Verse 18, now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. So notice Satan's tactic here that if he can't get the word just by taking it because you weren't paying attention and if he can't get it by bringing tribulation or persecution against you, he sows other things in your hearts through your ears. He sows something like uh, the deceitfulness of riches, the cares of this world, the desires or lusts for other things. And what happens? They get inside of your heart and they choke the word and make the word unfruitful. So he goes on to say, but these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it or they retain it and bear fruit, some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. So you can notice the good ground here has varying degrees of uh, harvest from this. Some harvest a full harvest, some harvest a partial harvest, some very little, but still they're considered good ground. You know what's interesting is Jesus said the wayside, the stony ground, the thorny ground, and the good ground. He didn't even talk about somebody that didn't hear the word. Because if you don't even have any of the seed of God's word, you don't even have a chance. See, we've got to get the word into our hearts. Verse 21, also he said to them, is a lamp brought to be put under a basket or under a bed? Is it not to be set on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it should come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. So Jesus is clearly saying about the word of God, still talking about the, the word, that God doesn't want to hide the word from us. He wants to reveal the word, and the word of God brings light to our lives. Verse 24, then he said, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away. This seems to relate to what he said in verse 23. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. So Jesus said, let him hear, but take heed what you hear. Grab on to what you hear, because the way you measure it, how you value it, that's going to make a difference in what you get out of it. So if you really value the word, you hang on to it, you meditate on it, you keep it in your heart, then you're measuring it at a high level and you're going to get a high level of yield off of this. So he goes on in verse 26 to say, 
And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. So notice the kingdom of God is like a guy who scatters seed, but he doesn't really understand how those crops are coming up. He goes to sleep, wakes up, and they grow up. But he doesn't really understand you know, how, how it works with, in terms of, you know, dirt and seeds and water and sunlight. I mean, he may understand the concept, but there's no way he can make that work. He doesn't really get it. He just knows it works. Well, listen, you don't have to know how electricity works. All you have to know to do is know how do you walk over to the wall and turn the light switch on? See, you don't have to understand all the implications, but you do have to understand what you have to do to make it work. See, and that's what Jesus is saying. You may not understand how it all works in the kingdom, but if you can understand what you're supposed to do, you can get it to work for you. Praise God, I like that. So let's come down now to verse, uh, once again, he says in verse 28, for the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that, the full grain in the head. So Jesus tells us the kingdom of God works by progression. In other words, you don't plant a seed and bam, you got a full crop. No, it works by progression. It comes a little at a time. That's why we have to have faith and we have to have patience to see things come to pass. But you have to keep watering. You have to stick with it and cultivate. Verse 30. Then he said, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground is smaller than all the seeds on earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. So in other words, it seems so small. When you're needing the power of God, when you're in crisis, when you see things happening in your life that are just not right, to take God's word and to begin to plant God's word, to listen to the word, to do what we're doing right now, reading God's word, sowing God's word, memorizing, meditating, whatever you're doing with God's word, it seems too small. It's too insignificant, like it's not going to take care of the problem. But Jesus said, but here's what you got to know about God's words. They're not normal seeds. They're like miracle seeds. And when God's word comes into your heart, man, it'll grow up and boom, it'll become greater than everything going on in your life, the addictions, bondages, and such. And so he said that's that's how we liken the power of the kingdom of God and the word of God. Verse 33, and with many such parables, he spoke the word to them. Do you remember that smaller group of people, not the big multitude? With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. Notice that Jesus did not teach them beyond their ability to hear. He taught them as they were able to hear it. Verse 34, but without a parable, he did not speak to them, that smaller group. And watch this. And when they were alone, he explained all things to his disciples. So now he's in a very small group, literally 12. See, and notice Jesus taught at three different levels in the same day, all because or based on the people's ability to hear. We want to be the kind of people that stay around the whole time and hear it all. And then we learn and we grow and we see the power of God manifest. All right, now watch this. Let's conclude this chapter because it's powerful. He's been teaching all day, three different sized crowds. He explained everything to his disciples. Verse 35, on the same day as all this teaching went on, it says, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, he, they took him along in the boat as he was. Boy, that tells me that he was very tired from a long day of ministry. They took him in the boat as he was. And it says, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose. That word great is the word mega, mega, a mega windstorm or megas, really. A mega windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. Well, you know, if a boat fills up with water, it's going to sink. And not only is it going to sink, but this is a major mega storm that's happening. And so notice this. Verse 38. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. 
Well, was he oblivious? Was he just so tired he didn't realize what was happening? Or was he in peace? Was he in faith? Well, he was evidently in faith. And it says, and they, the disciples, awoke him and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Don't you care that we're dying? And watch this. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. It's the same word as the great storm, a great calm, megas, a mega calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Now, why is he saying that to them? Because he's been teaching them the word all day long, and faith comes by hearing the word. He's saying, you should believe. I've been teaching you about the word of God today. Verse uh, 41, and they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Can you believe that? So he, instead of saying, well, of course I can do that because I'm the son of God. And of course you can't do that because you're not the son of God. No. He said, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And then he, and then they feared exceedingly and said, who can this be? But see, he was provoking them to say, why, why wouldn't you speak to the storm? Why wouldn't you say to the wind, peace be still? See, just like when Peter walked on the water, Jesus is teaching his disciples that they can, in his name, take authority and see the same power of God move. I think Jesus is also teaching this to us today. Thank God for the power of his word. But let's do what Jesus taught us to do. Let's keep sowing the word and sowing the word and sowing the word and not be like this multitude that walked away after a parable. Let's be like the disciples that stayed and stayed and stayed until he explained everything to us. Praise God. God's word is true and God is teaching us day by day. I look forward to chapter five tomorrow.